you want to find out about osmosis, you've come to the right place. First thing I want you to take notice of is this blue outline. The blue is there to represent water, and when we're talking about osmosis, we're always talking about water. Osmosis is basically a special case of diffusion. Previously, I've produced a video on diffusion. It explains that diffusion is where things move from where there's more of them to where there's less of them, from a higher concentration to a less concentra to a lower concentration. That's exactly what's happening in osmosis, but we're just dealing with water. All right, so let me bring in this point here. Here we have it. Osmosis. I'm always going to surround it in blue because I always want you thinking about water. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion involving the movement of water into and out of cells. It's as simple as that. So with diffusion, we're always talking about concentrations and concentration gradients. It makes sense to us in diffusion to say that something moves from a high concentration to a low concentration. The idea of concentrations is a little tricky with water because water is the solvent in which the solute is dissolved and we usually refer to the concentration of a solution as the concentration of whatever the thing is that's dissolved in water. That doesn't really work for us in osmosis, so I want to give you a much simpler way to think about how water is going to move in various situations. And that's by using this. In osmosis, water moves from a more watery solution to a less watery solution. It's as simple as that. We don't need to use the term concentration. We can just think about where is the solution more watery, where is the solution less watery, and that will be able to help us work out whether water's moving in which particular direction. All right, I think it's best now if we look at some examples and find out how does this actually apply to cells and how is this relevant to biology. So here I've got a beaker. All right, this is our beaker here. It's got a solution and of course, we need to have our cell. Right, now we need to have some sort of concentration inside of this cell so that we can use it to relate to the solution inside the beaker. I'm going to use sucrose. Sucrose is a type of sugar that's found inside of cells. Now, just for, for the sake of this example, let's say that our sucrose concentration inside of this cell is 10%. Okay, 10% sucrose. All right, now as I said before, sucrose would be the solute, it's what's dissolved inside of the solution, inside of that cell, making up the rest of that solution would be water. So if we've got 10% sucrose, we've got 90% water. Okay. Now, one thing I hadn't mentioned at the start, this is an animal cell. We've got no cell wall here, we've just got a semi-permeable cell membrane. Semi-permeable is very important. That means that things like water molecules are able to move across into and out of the cell. Uh, we've got our nucleus here, and apart from that, I've kept it pretty basic. Right, 10% sucrose, 90% water inside of that cell. And we've placed that cell into a beaker. Now, if that beaker were to contain a solution that was also 10% sucrose and 90% water, then we're going to have osmosis occurring, but as the water concentration is the same inside of the cell as it is outside of the cell, i.e. there's no more watery or less watery area, Water will be moving in and moving out at the same rate, so there will be no net gain or loss of water, and the cell will remain exactly the same. That's good. That's what this cell wants, because the osmotic pressure and the water uh, levels inside of that cell is really important for maintaining that cell's shape 
and that cell structure. All right, and I can highlight that by if we were to change the concentration of the solution and have a look at what, was to, what would be to happen to that cell in that situation. So let's say we made that cell sit in a beaker with 70% sucrose and therefore 30% water. Now we've got a situation where we've got a difference in the amount of water. Now we've got more watery solution inside of our cell and a less watery solution outside of our cell. Now remember, in osmosis, water moves from a more watery solution to a less watery solution. So we're going to have a net loss of water from inside of the cell to the solution in the beaker. And what that's going to do is result in a cell looking something like this. That cell has shriveled because it has lost its water and it will no longer function as well as it would have in its optimal conditions. So that's a result of osmosis and that's why osmotic pressure and the balance of water is really important inside of cells. Okay, so a shriveled cell due to the movement of water from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. Okay, let's take another example. So let's put our regular cell back in here. Let's change the concentrations that we have inside of our beaker. And let's say we put our cell into 0% sucrose, i.e. it's pure water. We have just put it into 100% pure water solution here. Now we have the reverse situation. We have a more watery solution in this beaker and a less watery solution inside of this cell. Therefore, by osmosis, water is going to move into the cell. Now think about it. If you're blowing up a balloon, if you're filling a bean bag full of beans, as that's occurring, it's getting bigger and bigger. So what will happen in this situation is water will continue to move into our cell and as it's an animal cell, with only that semi-permeable membrane protecting it, we get this, this situation where the cell will eventually burst as it, can't, it can no longer contain any more water and the pressure builds so much that we end up with the cell membrane actually bursting, which is obviously a bad situation for this cell. Okay, so that's the result of more watery solution outside of the cell, less watery solution inside of the cell, and water moving in so much that it fills the cell until the cell has burst. So hopefully from those examples you can see how osmosis plays a pivotal role in the balance of shape and structure of an animal cell. I haven't got an example to show you of a plant cell, but it works in exactly the same way. The only difference being, we don't often get this situation of a plant cell bursting because it has that protective cell wall around the outside which provides it with much more rigidity and structure to keep it a more solid shape. Uh, in the other example, where the cell shrivels, okay, this situation, with a plant cell that can still happen but of course we have our cell wall around the outside, so it's just the inner cell membrane that would just be peeling away from the cell wall. Okay, so that's osmosis. Uh, you've seen what it is, you've seen how it applies to cells, and I think all you really need to remember and take away from this is that osmosis is a special case of diffusion. We always think of water when we think of osmosis, and the rule is water moves from a more watery solution to a less watery solution. Hope you've enjoyed this one guys and we'll see you next time.